292. In the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. Next item of business is topical questions. Question 1, Willie Rainey. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what restrictions it is implementing in response to the suspected case of bird flu in Fife. Presenting officer, laboratory tests have revealed that there is a very mild form of H5N1 avian influenza virus that has been identified in a broiler breeder's flock near Dunfermline. It is quite distinct from the highly pathogenic form of H5N1, which has caused significant problems over the last decade or so around the world. However, robust action was immediately taken following reporting of initial suspicion to ensure that any potential risks from these birds, either to public or animal health, were minimised. And as a result, the farm is under restrictions, and the local area is subject to control and bird movements and gatherings by means of a one-kilometre temporary control zone. The eggs supplied by this unit are not for cons human consumption, but are sent to a company hatchery, which is also under similar restrictions. No eggs laid during the period in which the flock is believed to have been infected have hatched. A thorough investigation to identify the likely source of infection is now underway. All our actions are in line with requirements under EU law. A cull of the birds on the premises will be started not later than tomorrow morning. And I have been advised by the professionals from both Public Health uh, Scotland and the Food Standards Scotland that there is a minimal risk to public health, though precautions were put in place to safeguard those involved in the depopulation uh, and cull. And we have been in communication with our stakeholders who support all our actions to date. Well, Rennie. Uh, can I thank the Minister for that answer and also the reassurance he's given in terms of public health, because I think that's critically important uh, with this episode. But after years of the contingency plans and exercises, this is a real live test of the system. So can the Minister, I know it's early days, but can the Minister tell me more about how this outbreak was identified, how long it took for the authorities to be involved, whether there's any early indications as to the source of the outbreak, but also his overall view about whether the system is working effectively. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as Willie Rennie quite rightly says, there are tried and tested contingency plans for such outbreaks in Scotland, and the disease control groups met in early doors as soon as the suspicious case was identified by a private vet that had been called in by the company that owned the farm. And therefore, I want to commend both the farm manager for reporting the suspicious uh, illness uh, of the birds in question, and of course the private vet who in turn reported uh, and took the necessary action with the authorities. Uh, and that of course is the uh, responsible action that we would expect all poultry keepers uh, and their vets to take, and I thank them for that. In terms of the source, well quite clearly there have been a number of <coughs> similar uh, instances uh, Three in England in 2015, albeit different strains of H5N1 uh, and avian flu, uh, and some on the continent as well. It is widely uh, accepted that the wild bird population play a role uh, in spreading this, but of course it is early days in terms of this particular uh, incident uh, in Dunfermline, and that is why these investigations are ongoing, to try and identify what potential uh, source may be of uh, these, this incursion. So that these will continue, and I'll keep Parliament updated uh, as they progress. Well, I, I thank the Minister for, for that answer, and I think he's right about the vet and the farm manager, and they have to be commended um, for the way that they conducted themselves uh, for what could have been spread to another uh, incident on a wider basis. So I think they have to be commended uh, for the swift action, the professional action. Um, can the Minister give a guarantee that he will come to Parliament again and present a full report into the incident? so we can fully understand whether the system has worked effectively in this case. Because although it's been low risk on this occasion, it may be different in a future occasion, and we really need to know whether the system is working effectively. Can you give that guarantee? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I certainly give the guarantee to Willie Rennie and other members that I will keep Parliament updated as this investigation uh, progresses and any wider issues that may arise from that. I have already uh, notified the Rural Affairs Committee within Parliament of steps so far, and I will continue to do that. Thank you. Question number two, Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what powers are available to local authorities to carry out roadside emissions testing. Minister Derek McCann. The Road Traffic Vehicle Emissions Fixed Penalty Scotland Regulations 2003 provide powers for designated local authorities in Scotland to carry out roadside emissions tests 
and to issue £60 fixed penalty notices for any emissions offences under the Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations 1986 that are identified by the test. The Scottish Government provides financial support to local authorities for this work. Alison Johns. Um, there are clearly discrepancies between how various local authorities are implementing um, these regulations. And the Scottish Government published its National Air Pollution Strategy in November. Can the Minister tell me if all the actions identified for delivery in 2015-16 are on track? What budget is assigned to delivering these, these actions? And can the Minister assure us that the strategy to end air pollution is fully funded? Minister. I think it's quite a complex uh, area. I'm happy to come back uh, to Alison Johnson with more detail on implementation. Having just been debated in November 2015 when we published Cleaner Air for Scotland, clearly there is a lot to be done. It's a very challenging area and I think it's right to, to keep uh, pressure uh, on it, including our partnership with local authorities. Um, there is already funding within the system to execute many of the actions that have been uh, identified. Uh, and in addition to Alison Johnson's point about uh, the local authorities who are implementing uh, the key action here in terms of roadside testing, 13 out of the 32 local authorities are implementing that. I would encourage others uh, to implement the, the current regulations uh, as well. Uh, and I know that there are continuing discussions around that. But if Alison Johnson wishes further, uh, further information on the implementation, I am happy to supply that. But it is at an early stage, but clearly a very ambitious strategy to improve air quality, which is uh, so necessary because of the health impacts in our country. Ms Johnson. Um, thank you. Professor David Newby's research demonstrates a clear link between air pollution and heart disease. In fact, he has stated that air pollution is one of the top avoidable contributors to heart disease. Now, the Minister frequently cites his record levels of investment in walking and cycling, but when that record is a lowly 1.9% of the transport budget, it appears clear that the Minister is making transport investment decisions that are putting Scotland's health at risk. I would ask the Minister when he will start to take this issue seriously and invest in the transport options that will allow us to eradicate air pollution. Minister. I think there is a range of work that can be uh, welcomed. And if we were to target um, roads investment, for example, I think that the, the new Queensferry crossings are necessary investment should not be criticised, or the work in the duelling on the A9 is partly about road safety as well and should not be criticised because it is about protecting lives so equally. I think it is a fair point to say that uh, emissions from, from vehicles, of course, is damaging to the planet and damaging to individuals and community health as well. It is fair to say that some premature deaths are brought about because of those emissions, and that is why we support, for example, the decarbonisation of, of transport, the move to electric vehicles and low-carbon vehicles as well, and there is specific funding for that. I would not criticise the investment, the record investment in active travel as well, which, uh, that is right, I did inherit from Mr Brown, record high uh, funding and active travel, and I have sustained that despite the financial pressures that we face. Over a billion pounds is spent every year on, on encouraging people out of the car and into public transport as well. So I think they are all the right uh, budget decisions, a very challenging environment. But I do not undermine in any way or, or underestimate the challenge of improving our environment, encouraging people to make healthier life choices, and that is what the Government will continue to do as part of the Cleaner Air for Scotland strategy and our many other interventions. Sarah Boyer. Can I thank the Minister for the thoughts there? Is there not a point that um, there is lots of good work being done, but we do need more concerted action in those areas where air quality is breached, the standards are breached, and is that not the point at which we need leadership from the Scottish Government to work with local authorities for targeted action in the urban areas where it is clear that we now have people dying preventable deaths because of poor air quality? Minister. It is a fair point that Sarah Boyack makes. Where there has been breaches or identified uh, areas of concern, then clearly there are air quality management areas in place that can support that. There may be a range of, of interventions that can be made, and it is not necessarily just uh, about environmental enforcement, but different decisions that can tackle the, the local hotspots. And of course, I am more than happy to continue to work in partnership with uh, local authorities who identify these uh, areas to try and improve local air quality. Question number three, John Lamont. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what actions it is taking to support those affected by Hoyt Knitwear entering administration. Minister Fergus 
Uh, presiding officer, I am deeply concerned that Hoyt Knitwear Limited has been placed into administration with the loss of 119 jobs. My thoughts are with staff and their families at this difficult time. I will be visiting the site tomorrow to speak with the administrators, KPMG, uh, I hope Borders Council, and with members of workforce and their representatives to assure them that we will do everything possible to support them. I can confirm that the Scottish Government and its agencies in partnership with Scottish Borders Council are exploring every possible avenue of support for the company and we're working very closely with the administrators to secure new owners for the business. I can also confirm that we are providing support for the employees facing redundancy through our initiative for responding to redundancy situations, partnership action for continuing employment. Through providing skills development and employability support, PACE will aim to minimise the time those individuals affected by redundancy are out of work. All affected employees have received information on PACE support and a PACE redundancy support event and jobs fair will take place this Friday, the 15th of January at Hoyk Rugby Club, where PACE partners and local employers with vacancies will be available to meet with individuals to assist them with future employment opportunities. John um, I thank the Minister for that answer and for the very constructive dialogue that he has had with me over the last few days about this important matter. The loss of at least 120 jobs in a town the size of Hoyt will have a far greater proportional effect on the closure of Tata Steel. To that end, I would repeat my request that the Minister consider setting up a task force to give additional support to the textiles industry in Hoyt. Would the Minister consider that further? Minister. Uh, yes, we will consider that uh, further. We are open-minded as to whether a task force is required. Uh, as we discussed uh, this morning, uh, John Lamont and I, I think it is prudent first to take a, a, a little while, a short while, to assess the situation, working closely with the administrators, as we always do, and the workforce representatives and the local authority. Uh, however, I will revert to the member on this. Similar concerns have been expressed to me by Callum Kerr, the MP, and Paul Wheelhouse. Uh, and uh, uh, as Mr Lamont knows, uh, I seek to take a bipartisan approach on all of these matters. And if there is a task force, we will seek to have a appropriate, balanced political representation on it. Um, so I, I hope that that uh, is uh, a sufficient answer at this point for Mr. Le Mr. Lamont's question. Mr. Lamont. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you for that further um, response, Minister. From a practical perspective, I know, that, I know from my discussions with the employees and trade union officials that there are concerns about the online application process contained in the PACE pack. Can the Minister ensure that additional support is provided at the PACE event on Friday to assist those employees who are struggling? Minister. Uh, yes, I can. I have, following our discussion this morning, uh, Mr Lamont and myself, uh, Presiding Officer, um, asked uh, a, the head of PACE to ensure that that particular aspect does not pose a hurdle uh, and uh, we, we will take steps to ensure that that aspect is dealt with. I would like perhaps just to emphasise that uh, we hope to continue the support that we have provided to the textiles industry, including RSA awards uh, over the last 18 months, totalling £536,000 to five individual companies, including in fact Hoyt Knitwear. Uh, and I know also that Mr Wheelhouse and Mr Swinney have been involved in textile events uh, over the past years, have indeed had previous uh, administrations. So the problems are not new, presiding officer, but I think there's a shared determination across the House, both to promote the excellent work that is done, the high quality work in the industry, which has great successes. It is not all doom and gloom, but also to address the extremely unfortunate position which Hoyk faces now, particularly in the light uh, of the fact that they took place just around the same time as the town was affected by flooding. So that kind of double whammy is one which will be felt very strongly in Hoyk, uh, and therefore I will be uh, very much looking forward to hearing tomorrow from those most directly involved how we can work together to tackle the challenges that Hoyk and the people of Hoyk face. Thank you. Uh, that ends topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on flooding. The Deputy First Minister will